reviews how to use ultrasound to evaluate the popliteal region and determine if a Baker's cyst is present. A 61-year-old woman with a history of degenerative joint disease is referred to you for evaluation of pain and tightness in the right popliteal region, exacerbated by full flexion or extension of the affected knee. You decide to use ultrasound to evaluate for the presence of a Baker's cyst. Baker's cysts develop as a result of a communication between the knee joint space and the semimembranosus medial gastrocnemius bursa. A knee joint effusion can distend a Baker's cyst via this communication. Ultrasound is an easy and effective method of diagnosing a Baker's cyst. The patient should be in the prone position with the affected knee extended. Using a linear ultrasound transducer, Begin the evaluation by placing the probe in the transverse plane over the posterior mid-calf. In this normal volunteer, the medial and lateral heads of the gastrocnemius muscle can be seen in the near field, with the medial head on the left side of the screen. The soleus muscle is seen deep to these structures. Maintaining a transverse orientation, slide the probe cephalad along the medial aspect of the medial head of the gastrocnemius muscle. As the popliteal fossa is approached, the hyperechoic semimembranosus tendon can be identified as a round structure medial to the medial head of the gastrocnemius. Just superficial to the semimembranosus tendon is the semitendinosus tendon, which is about half the size of the semimembranosus tendon. Lateral to these structures is the medial head of the gastrocnemius, with its tendon somewhat comma-shaped at the medial margin of the muscle belly. By angling the transducer along the long axis of the tendons, each tendon may appear hypoechoic due to anisotropy. It is important not to mistake a tendon that is hypoechoic due to anisotropy for a small Baker's cyst. If a Baker's cyst is present, then distension of the semimembranosus medial gastrocnemius bursa can be seen at this location. Diagnosis of a Baker's cyst depends upon identification of a channel or neck between the semimembranosus tendon and the medial head of the gastrocnemius, best seen in the transverse plane. This channel connects the more superficial semimembranosus medial gastrocnemius bursa, which is distended with fluid, to the usually less distended subgastrocnemius bursa. In the transverse view, these three components of the Baker cyst comprise a C-shaped fluid collection wrapping around the medial head of the gastrocnemius. If a Baker cyst is identified, the probe should be turned 90 degrees in order to obtain a sagittal image and assess its longitudinal extent and look for evidence of rupture. In this view, the cyst typically appears as a larger, more superficial fluid collection with a smaller, deeper fluid collection separated by the tendon of the medial head of the gastrocnemius. Slide the probe caudally in order to visualize the inferior margin of the cyst, which should be distinct and smooth. Although ultrasound-guided aspiration of a Baker cyst is not definitive treatment for the condition, it may be useful to temporarily alleviate symptoms and is a commonly performed procedure. You perform an ultrasound-guided evaluation of your patient's right popliteal region. You identify the characteristic three components of a Baker cyst in the transverse plane and evaluate the inferior margin of the cyst in the sagittal plane. The ultrasound diagnosis of a Baker's cyst depends upon the identification of the channel, or neck, between the semimembranosus tendon and the medial head of the gastrocnemius muscle. Do not exclude the possibility of an infected cyst based on ultrasound findings alone.